outro cast. Gus, how's your day going aside from answering the same questions over and over and over again <laughs> for better news sites asking you clickbait questions? What's that? Sorry. Well, I, I'd have to assume half the interviews you're doing today, they're going to be going for the clickbait questions. So how's your day going aside from that whole thing? Actually, I had, you were the second today, but the first one, uh, for some reason, canceled. They couldn't do it. So um, so you, you're my first interview today. Fresh meat. Well, anyway, congrats on the new record, Stan United. When did you actually finish it? Thank you. Uh, we finished the record, <clears throat> I want to say around... Mm. summer 2023 sometime in the summer like june or something mm -hmm. yeah and, and on this one you contributed more lyrics than on prior releases what inspired that were you usually writing lyrics and not using them or just in this case you had more lyrics um no i never really bothered writing lyrics uh, unless i really really had to and we had a tight deadline and i had to help out somehow um and um, on this last one, I just felt that I had things to say, I guess, you know, because I was involved, obviously, from the start with um, the whole concept and the things we were talking about between mm -hmm. me and Herbie, um, the singer. We were talking about, you know, topics and usually I have like working titles and then we talk about something. And then eventually I started coming up with some lyrics here and there, some some verses or I don't know. It just so happened. And I, I probably had a lot of time to kill on, on, on the road because we were writing lyrics while on tour. We had done the drums and then went on a long European tour oh. with uh, with Beast in Black last year. And I think I just had many hours to kill. And then I would just present stuff to Herbie and he was like, oh yeah, this is cool, this is cool. So I, I ended up like eventually gathering quite a bit of lyrics, yeah. Got it. So since the album's been done for more than six months, are you already thinking about the next one? No, no, of course not. <laughs> Sometimes I mean, you talk to artists who are already working on the next album before this one's actually out. An artist like Beck, for example, will kind of do that thing. That's why I was curious. Mm. No, I'm not really like that because uh, we it's taken so long to put the tours together and the plan together and the promo plan and everything. So, uh, you know, I've been so busy with that that I haven't really even played guitar that much, let alone like, uh, you know, write anything. I mean, I have ideas, I have ideas, but I haven't really sat down to really record something properly. Uh, it'll be a while, I think, until I, I get back and start doing something. So if there's 12 songs in a Firewind album, that means you wrote 12 songs? I wrote, actually on this one, we wrote nine and there's a cover tune as well. So right. yeah, that's all we did. Yeah, the Romantics cover, yeah. Right. So I'm curious about the writing part. Do you ever write on piano or other instruments besides guitar? Not really. No, just guitar. Hmm. Yeah. Because sometimes you hear people who are, we think of as guitarists, they actually write on piano or a different instrument, or they just sing themselves and then they build the guitar around it. For you, it's actually the noodling on the guitar leads to the song? Yeah, very traditionally. I mean, I'm a shitty piano player anyways. I can't really, I can, I can play a few chords and, you know, I know the notes and I can play some stuff that I need to do for like the, the recordings and stuff. Um, and if it's something too technical, I'll just do it part by part and just like edit it all. Um, so, but I mean, I, it would be something that I would like to explore more in the future. Um, but yeah, I just love playing guitar so much that all of my ideas just come out of that. The piano part of your life, is that because of going to Berkeley, you had to step up a little bit with the piano? No, not at all. Not at all. It wasn't required, at, at least then, or the classes I took. Um, I just had a keyboard here always in my home studio. And um, I think it was during the pandemic that I just realized that I, I would like to start. I, actually, I was living in, in and I was, I was renting this place that, the place had a uh, a piano, like an acoustic piano, not not with a tail, but just like an acoustic piano. Right. And and um, I just got really into it for a while, and I just started learning a lot of stuff and tried to figure out some John Lennon songs and things like that. And I realized that, that it's 
pretty difficult, you know, like to, if you haven't been trained for this, you know, my fingers would hurt like in a different way, not like a guitar player, like, like you get blisters and stuff. So, so I started getting into it for a while. And uh, I think during the lockdowns, uh, the first lockdown, I, I was, uh, I was really practicing. Um, and I think, yeah, I started maybe incorporating some more of that into uh, the recordings, but I don't really write on, on piano. Yeah. Had you had any experience in the U.S. before going to Berkeley? Experience? Meaning travel, vacation? Yes. Or... Yes, so I have. Berkeley was not your first time in the U.S. No, no, no. I've been I've been visiting the U.S. since I was a kid, basically, because my mom's brother, my uncle, he he lives in Florida. So I had visited him for a few a uh, few summers, like since I was like ten or eleven. Um, so I had spent a couple of summers in the States prior to that, um, just visiting uncle, you know, <laughs> to use a stereotype here, uh, Greek Florida, is that Tarpon Springs where your uncle lives? No, it's not. He lives in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> yeah. Now being a New Yorker, you know, we kind of realize that everybody is Greek, but you don't really realize it because they changed their name. You don't really realize that everyone named Gus is really Costas or George or that kind of a thing. So yep. we, you know, everybody's Greek over here. When did you kind of realize that, that in the States, everyone is Greek, even if the last name didn't apply it? Well, not everyone. I mean, you have a lot of Italians too. You have a lot of Polish, a lot of everything. You know, a lot of people from all over Europe, Irish, but, but you do have Astoria in New York and that's, yeah. And believe it or not, I've never been there. I've been to New York so many times, never been to Astoria, probably because there's no need. Like, I mean, I live in Greece anyway, so <laughs> why go see <laughs> a miniature of Greece in there? So. To laugh. It's like going to Epcot at Disney World. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, just just for the fuck of it, I would like I would like to just visit once, like if I but I never have the time anyways. I'm always busy doing things, but I would like to go down there sometime. But you have um, your uh, secret Greek mafia in Hard Rock. There's you, there's Phil X, there's Tommy Lee. So the legends are there. We just don't connect all the dots to realize that the Greeks rule heavy metal. You're right. Yeah. Because people always ask me like, dude, Greece, like, are there any metal bands from Greece? And then if, if you think about it, there's a lot of uh, famous rockers that will have Greek heritage at least. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're yeah. going to get you into the Greek Hall of Fame. And if one doesn't exist, we'll make one happen. But anyway, <laughs> back to you, Gus. Uh, so it's fascinating to hear that you're not writing music every day. Because some artists you speak with, they're writing as their creative exercise, like their nine to five kind of job. When you're not busy with touring and recording, where does your time usually go? Um, basically, I'm managing the band as well. So it's like a, it's like a, day job almost you know if you want to call it like that um it, it's it's like a lot of office work you know just answering a lot of emails getting on a lot of calls and taking care of a lot sure. of things with the band and the busier we are the more tours that we do the more stuff there is to take care of and you know like i'm the go-to person to talk to the agents the travel agents the you know the accountants the, the, the so many people are involved behind the scenes of what you see in a band so um that doesn't leave that much time after that you know especially if you you know i have my family you know my wife and um so but it, between that 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 thing and then like you know running the the, the daily the day-to-day -day business of the band and you know being a family man it's there goes the time so i don't yeah. really sit down and um look at the ceiling of strumming on chords and like waiting for inspiration to hit like i don't i don't have that luxury anymore at least <laughs> anymore so were you always a good business person or did you have to learn over time because you had a bad manager or two and wanted to know where the money went um no i think even when i started like in the early days in my early 20s i i was always interested in in the business part of it like i would like whenever i was offered my first record contract i was asking like the lawyer oh so what does this mean and what is you know what is that term in perpetuity mean <laughs> and you know like things like that or what what is publishing or um why are the splits like that like i was just genuinely 
genuinely interested in the in the business part of it and um of course i've made some um i've, I've signed some deals that were not in in my favor but I, I i think i don't really have any regrets about these things because it was you know you have to pass through that level to you know improve yourself and, and get somewhere before before you're in a position to negotiate anything really um, yeah, you had to start but, somewhere and usually that involves yeah. one or two bad deals before you can renegotiate them or learn what not to do again and i can understand man like i can understand that like if you haven't sold one record in your life and somebody you know shows up and offers you a record deal and gives you some money to and you know is going to invest in you to develop your name and brand and just you know just help your career you know like you you know you're not going to get the most beneficial deal like your the, the benefit for you is that you're going to get to make a name for yourself hopefully yeah well i have three quick questions and then i'll let you go and these could be stupid questions but they're all meant to be complimentary okay, okay. You ready yeah okay, so the first was you made headlines a couple days ago when somebody said hey uh he almost auditioned for this band this band but one person i'm curious if you ever auditioned for was David Lee Roth. And that's because a lot of David Lee Roth people also played with Ozzy and vice versa. Sorry, I, I didn't get the question. Sorry. Like uh, did you ever audition for David Lee Roth? Because it's Oh, that like was a question. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> then the follow-up to that is when everyone talks about your guitar influences, obviously they rush to say, oh, Randy and Zach and all that, but we know that you're more varied with all that. Was Van Halen, though, one of the bands that you started off on learning all the songs of? No, not really. Um, maybe because Van Halen wasn't or they, they were not that much of, into the culture of the rock culture here in Europe or maybe in Greece. You know, I was just exposed to different kind of stuff. Uh, you know, for me, it was more like Gary Moore or something, you know, uh, British players. So, of course, I, I knew of Van Halen, you know, like I, I, I saw the videos on MTV and things like that. Uh, and I got into it, but I, I got into it a bit, a little bit later. You know what I mean? So it was not like the first thing I checked out and I was like, oh, my God, I have to pick up all the records. I, I found out on, you know, as I was developing my guitar playing. So, yeah. Interesting, because in, in the States, Van Halen is a top 10 all time kind of band. But then you find out they never really toured most of the world. Their music is not still played on the radio in most of the world, just U.S., Canada, Japan and maybe the Netherlands. But anyway, yeah, I think I think they, they only had like one hit here, mainly like Jump. That was it. Wow. Like the rest is not really. Yeah. I, you know, to my knowledge, that was the, the song that you would always see. And that was like the, the keyboard song, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, that was a song that Eddie mainly did keyboards. <laughs> yeah. And the the last question Whenever I find somebody can play a lot of notes on an instrument that they're very technically proficient, they're gamers, they're video game people. Are you one of the secret gamer shred guitarists? Not me, man. No, I, I, I never really I never really got into it. You know, I was just like a guitar nerd. Um, never really had my, much time for, for video games and things like that. So, yeah. Got it. So what I've learned today is... Gus is a very, very busy man. He hasn't been to Astoria, but he's been all around the States and the world. And uh, more great things are to come from you as a guitar player and lyricist in the future. I hope so. <laughs> Outro cast.